Hey everybody, how you doing today? Uh, we're bringing this Facebook Live segment to you from our Axiom facility here in Fresno, Texas, just right outside of Houston. I'm Chad Benquist, uh, and what you see behind me today is a sample of our full line of offerings that we manufacture here at Axiom. The main purpose of this segment today is to showcase one of our premier units is going to be the mini DRS system and today here to take us through this uh, segment along with the demonstration is Bill Nelson who has about 32 years under this roof and Bill could you take us through this machine uh, in terms of functionality where we may see it in the workplace or in the field and how it would be a benefit to our people watching today or potentially the people that would uh, utilize it more than happy to. So this is the Smith Mini VRS. It's the smallest blast recovery system, or closed loop blaster, if you will. This is the smallest unit within our product offering. We do manufacture units of much larger size. Two and three and six cubic foot are common, but this Mini VRS carries a whole lot of punch for its size. This unit is really pretty basic. It consists of a blast vessel on the bottom, about a half a cubic foot. It has a cyclonic abrasive reclaimer, so it spent abrasive is back in, back in. The good particles are separated from the dust by cyclonic separation. And then it has a dust collector where your dust and paint contaminants are brought over into this segment to get them out of your airstream. This article here called in a ductor. This is a pneumatic vacuum pump. So if your compressor feeds air into this and out this diffuser, that is what creates the vacuum on your dust collector, which in turn pulls the vacuum on the abrasive reclaimer, which in turn then pulls a vacuum on the Smith blast recovery head. So this head, which, is, which includes our trigger style dead man, has a two inch vacuum hose, a five eighths blast nozzle coming from the pressure vessel into an integrated nozzle into this work head. So as long as your vacuum is on and these brushes remain in contact with your work surface, this system will blast an area and reclaim all of your spent abrasives and whatever you're taking off of. Our new work head is quite comfortable, which you're fixing to witness here in a minute as our man is going to do some test blasting on the sample pieces behind us. These brushes come in flat. They also come in angled brushes, which allow you to do the inside or an outside corner, which we will demonstrate going forward. Some other items I want to point out on this unit is that it does have a reverse pulse system on that single cartridge filter. So as your operator sees that he's getting some load up on that filter, he can simply pop that valve, which initiates this reverse pulse to pump that filter and get the finer particles to come back down into the waste bin for disposal. Also notice on the bottom, our dusty air comes to a cyclonic separator where we cyclonically separate most of the dust out of the air or waste or throw away before that air even gets to the filter. So this pre-cyclone protects that filter much more than if than other units that don't use that cyclonic separation. It's a very nice unit, it's very lightweight, compact, and as you can see, it's quite easy to move. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to tear, turn on my inlet air. I have this system regulated back to 70 PSI. <laughs> In blast recovery systems, you really want to run the nozzle as low as you can and still get your production rate so where you're not putting additional air into that brush head that you don't need. So I've regulated this back to 70 PSI. We'll see how it goes. If I want to adjust up or down, it's a simple regulator on the unit that enables me to do so. 
I'm going to turn the air on to the inductor at this point. You're going to hear a little bit of noise and have trouble hearing me. So at this point, I'm going to engage the inductor and allow Tommy to do a little test blast with a flat brush head. This is not the equivalent of an open air blast. When you're close proximity, to, I'm sorry, close circuit blasting, you're not able to get a large nozzle because of the relation between the nozzle and the brushes. This is not a high production unit, but where this comes into play is where your job site has either touch up blasting or it has well seems to be inspected or it has small blasting projects where you can't really afford to go put up full containment and put a man inside that containment. A lot of jobs dictate that a smaller, close-loop system like this is more effective than you having to go through the cost of the erection of containment and the tearing down of that containment. This system is capable of using a wide variety of abrasives. We've run pressed glass to it, we've run garnet to it, We've run aluminum oxide through it. Most common, particularly my favorite, is the steel grit because of the recyclability. All of that abrasive gets pulled back in, gets spun out, and then falls back down into your pressure vessel for reuse. Well, the more recyclable that abrasive is, the longer run you're going to get between having to dump your or empty your dust collector and replenish your abrasive. Now they're in the process, and just in the time I was talking, they already changed over to one of the angle brushes. So we're going to re-engage the vacuum, and Tommy is going to show you an angle blast at this point. I want to introduce y'all to Paul Tamus. There are a few questions that have come up, and Mr. Tamus is going to answer those for you. How are y'all? First off, we'd like to ask you to please go ahead and like our video. Um, you know, if you have any questions, please go ahead and type them in. Uh, if you can't answer them on air, of course, we'll go ahead and answer them uh, you know, here this afternoon. Um, the question of one that I just saw that came over, uh, lower and ask type of abrasive you can use. Again, basically any abrasive you want, uh, from the softer to the harder, uh, especially for the uh, recyclability. Uh, then I also saw that Greg uh, asked what size adductor you can use on this. This is what, a 75 CFM adductor. Um, it's got plenty of vacuum on it. Uh, That'll work just fine for you. Okay, so what that means is this adductor nozzle dictates how many CFM I'm using to generate the vacuum. I'm consuming 75 CFM to draw the vacuum. My nozzle is consuming another 75 CFM. It's a number three nozzle. That means that there's 150, 160 CFM total required to run this unit 
which means you can run this unit on a 185 CFM compressor. If you have long runs beyond 200 feet, I personally ran this unit as is at 200 feet. If you have to run beyond that, we simply swap that adductor out to a 100 CFM adductor, which means you'll need a 250 CFM compressor to drive it, but you can last as much longer distances with this than most people realize. But as it comes off the shelf, a 185 will run this unit. Any other questions that have been brought up? Not that I've seen, but to, to let you know, we just swapped out the other corner brush. I'm going to go ahead and run it on the unit uh, to tell you what this looks like. basic functionality of the Mini BRS. Again, as you can see, it's not high production, but where it has its place, it's the finest unit of its nature in the world. So at this point, Chad wants to take back over a little and just expound a little bit more on the brushes and how easy they are to swap out, as well as touch back on the Smith workhead. So as the four mentioned, uh, we offer three different types of brushes. We have our flat brush, we have our inside and outside corner brushes which we currently offer. In addition to that, we also offer high temp brushes for those situations where uh, you may be in a refinery or such working on uh, live uh, pipelines and, and the like. So just to let you all know that those high temp brushes are available uh, for this work kit as well. couple other things from my side. Um, if you also please kind of let us know where you're from. Uh, we'd like to kind of keep track of that. Also to let you know we're planning on doing this uh, on our different product lines every couple weeks or so. So please let us know what you want to see next and we'll go ahead and do a segment on that also. Thank you. Any other questions have come in? Well, yeah, one question was how fast does it take to switch out those flat tests? Okay, well, in the time that I've been talking to you has been the swap over, but just for clarity, since the question was asked, Chad, on the being video, would you please make a change over? That's pretty fast. No tools are required. <coughs> it's an easy changeover. We spent a lot of time designing that for such. The other question that came in, I was just referred to, was high, how high of a temperature can our high temp brushes reach? Please don't quote me, but if I remember right, it's 400 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have interest, please contact us. Let me confirm that. Shamefully, I should have done that before this video, but I'm here. So, if there's any other questions that have come up, it looks like that's it. Please think of this. Please bring back us some more questions. We really enjoy engaging with y'all. That's our Mini PRS by Schmidt. This is the team that has brought it to you, as, long, as well as another half a dozen people involved in setting up this demonstration. I commend them all. I think that this first one came out really well. Your responses, your questions, and any other comments or suggestions on how we can improve this, please send them through. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.